Let's take a look at some assembly basics in SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric. Here I am in SOLIDWORKS. I have a part open that I imported using a step file from Creo Parametric. If I go to the little flyout menu and then to window, I have three different parts open. I have the front of an engine block as well and also a cylinder part. Let me go back to the rear of the engine block. And to create an assembly, one way that you can do it inside of SOLIDWORKS is by going to the file menu. And here we have an option to make a drawing from a part or make assembly from a part. If you had an assembly open, you can actually make an assembly from assembly. Let's use this. It's a nice little shortcut to start off a brand new assembly. And Right now, I've got my pointer in a little bit of a different style. It's got a block on the end, and I'm being prompted to begin the assembly. And there's a message here that says, select a component to insert, then place it in the graphics area, or hit OK to locate it at the origin. And so right now, it's got the part that I had open last selected. There are also the other two parts listed in here. And I'm just going to left click in order to drop it into the model. If you take a look at what SOLIDWORKS calls the Feature Manager Design Tree, here you can see the component. There is F in parentheses to the left of the name of the component, and that indicates that this component is fixed. So when you use this method, the first component is automatically fixed in the model. Now let's take a look at bringing in some other components. If you take a look at the ribbon, right now I am on the assembly tab. Most of the commands are available. And one of the commands that we have here is insert component. You can see a little preview of how they're showing how to use it. Let's click on the command. And again, it lists the other different components that I have open. And it says use the push pin to insert multiple copies of the same or different components. So we're sort of like just dropping the components that we want in the assembly to begin with. And so I want to grab the cylinder and also the front of the engine block. Let me actually let me just do them one at a time. So I've got the cylinder and I'll just move it approximately kind of where I want it. And so that way we have it in our assembly window. You can see the minus sign in parentheses. That indicates that it is not fully located in the model. You can actually do multiple components at a time, but I didn't get the other one in here. Let's grab the front of the engine block. And again, it's attached to my mouse by default. Let's left click approximately where we want it in the model. So that's good, and I've got them in here. And if you want to move the components around, you can just click on them and then drag them approximately where you want them to be. So I could start repositioning these like so. And eh, they're not exactly where I want them to be, but that is okay. And by the way, if you see me fumbling around manipulating the model on the screen, it's just I'm so hardwired into the movement methods in Creo Parametric. So let's say that I want to define the locations of these components relative to one another. In SOLIDWORKS, you use what are called mates, which Creo Parametric calls constraints. If I click on the mates command, we get this dialog box, this manager that allows us to select the different entities that we want to mate together and specify how we want them mated. Like Coincident, parallel, perpendicular, tangent, concentric, using a distance, using an angle, so forth and so on. Let me start selecting some references. So, for example, I could select this little tab from one component and then select the corresponding cylindrical surface from the other component. So, you've got those two faces, and by default, they are concentric. I can hit the check mark to complete that one. I'm going to drag the component away a little bit, just make it a little easier to select things. And then I will select the hole from one of the parts and then the tab from this one. And once again, we get a concentric mate. Let's hit the check mark for that one. And then I will pick 
this flat surface and let me rotate the model and get this flat surface here and once again we are getting a mate this time we're getting a coincident constraint not a concentric constraint let's hit the check mark in order to complete that one and i'm going to hit the check mark for a moment right now just to show you where i am so far and in this particular situation if i expand the mates folder here you can see the three different mates and so this is definitely different than creoparametric whereas you define your constraints as you're assembling the different components and as i understand it i could be wrong about this the way that solidworks computes these is that it sort of like solves all the different mates simultaneously as opposed to creoparametric which is based on the order in which the components appear in the model tree or as they call it here the feature manager design tree all right so there we have some of the different mates and again you've got this folder that you can open and you can expand you can access the different mates and right click on them to do things like you can delete them or if you want to edit them you can make changes to them let's put in some more mates in order to locate the cylinder so once again i will click on the mate command and let me grab let me try zooming in and there we go i get this cylindrical surface and that cylindrical surface and so there we have a concentric mate let me hit the check mark and again i'm just going to drag the component upwards make it a little easier to select things and let's get this cylindrical surface and oops let me move everything around there we go got that one over there that's good for that mate let's hit the check mark for that one and then for the next one let's grab say this flat surface and this flat surface and that way we have a, another coincident mate and I will hit the check mark and so that way we've got our three components located let's hit the check mark once again to close that mate property manager I believe it is called and so you can see the six different constraints excuse me the six different mates that we have in our assembly model and as I move my mouse over them they highlight and I, of course I can collapse the mates folder all right let's take a look at how you would do this in Creo parametric okay here I am in Creo if I go to my little window drop down you can see the other different components that we have available and Creo parametric doesn't have a command like make assembly from part you're going to use the new command to create a brand new assembly and I will choose the assembly radio button you have a bunch of different subtypes you can change the file name and the common name I will use my standard default template which one do I want to use I need to change my config settings let me use say a metric template and so you can see the default datums I don't need to see them for what I'm going to do so let me turn off their display to bring components in we will use the assemble command I'm going to go to in session and let's grab the rear of the engine block and then I can right mouse click and hold and choose default constraint to locate it at the essentially the origin it aligns the default datum planes of the component with the default datum planes of the assembly instead of having that property manager for mates over on the left hand side of the screen Creo parametric uses dashboard interfaces yes it's at the top of the screen but it used to be down at the bottom of the screen which is why they're called dashboards let's hit the check mark or the middle mouse button in order to finish placement of the first component and if there's no symbol which is called a glyph next to the component in the model tree that means that it is fully constrained for example if I click on the component and then edit definition here you can see that we have a status saying that it is fully constrained in other words there are no available degrees of freedom let's bring in our next component so I will click assemble let me go to in session just have a 
lower list. All right, let's bring in the front of the engine block. And when you're placing the component, they have this 3D dragger that you can use to start positioning things relative to each other before adding different constraints. Also, in addition to using that 3D dragger in the graphics area, you can use combinations of the control and alt keys. So control, alt, and middle mouse button will allow you to spin the model that you are assembling. Control, alt, and the right mouse button allows you to drag it. But let's start defining our constraints. I will pick a cylindrical surface over here and then a cylindrical surface over there. So again, it's, it is a, a difference from SolidWorks in that you are adding your constraints as opposed to mates when you are placing the component in the assembly. Let's grab those two cylindrical surfaces. And you can see that there are 3D notes on the computer screen indicating that the first constraint is coincident. The second one, it used something called oriented if you wanted to, you could change what constraint is being used by double clicking on the node and you've got a drop down list of the different available constraints. Alternatively, if you go to the placement tab on the dashboard, here we have the constraint, we have a drop down list. Also, as you are adding a new constraint, you can also choose which one that you want to have from the drop down list over there as well. So anyhow, let's get our third constraint in here. Let me, since I was clicking around, let me just activate the new constraint option. Normally I would just start picking additional services, but since I was moving around, selecting different things, I had to explicitly tell Creo, hey, let me throw in another constraint. And now we are fully constrained. When the component is fully constrained, its preview color changes in this case to this pretty orange all right let's hit the check mark or the middle mouse button to bring in the second component or to complete the placement now let's put in our third component i will hit the assemble button let's grab the third part that we want to have in here and again you can start repositioning it as you are placing it alternatively sometimes you're trying to place something really small in a big assembly so you have the ability to turn on the display of something called an accessory window that allows you to select from here as opposed to trying to pick stuff in the graphics area i usually use a combination so let's select a cylindrical surface here and a cylindrical surface over there so we got our coincident constraint and let me rotate over and i'm going to pick corresponding holes on the other side again we are partially constrained and let's pick say a flat surface here and this flat surface and it went to coincident and again if you wanted to use something different instead like a distance constraint you can change that and here we have a little drag handle you know you've got essentially the same stuff in SOLIDWORKS uh, with their distance mate all right, let me change that back to coincident and then hit the middle mouse button to complete placement. And so there we have our three components inside of the assembly. So there you can see how you start off a basic assembly using bottom up design techniques in SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.